Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are about to enter a world of darkness. A world where life and death are meaningless. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of East versus West. Last week we had our tenth episode. Can't believe we've done ten episodes of this already, Eddie. Um, we're on episode eleven. Uh, so today we got a couple announcements to talk about. Uh, first and foremost, Orlando has their entire event out and announced. They just announced their scare zones this week and their final maze today, which is going on both coasts by the way this is the only show where you can get your dose of both coasts that's our new kind of catch line i hope you guys enjoy that that came out yeah. randomly last week and we both had a kick out of it so we just made it our official slogan for the um east versus west so now it's going to be east versus west the show where you can get a dose of both coasts um i love it it's good uh today we just got house of a thousand corpses announced for both events that's your guys's last maze announced um, so let's break it down a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about the scare zones at HHN Orlando. I understand they got uh, two very well-known properties, and then they got, of course, three original ones. Um, so let's talk a little bit about those, starting with, of course, the uh, originals first, and then we'll get to the well-known ones later. So, Eddie, take it away. Yeah, so uh, like Anthony said, we got all, all of Orlando is completely announced. I, I think the only thing that's missing is uh, potentially there's a second show that they're going to be talking about because uh, in the writing on the website it says shows and they've only announced Academy of Villains at the moment. So there might be an extra show. Uh, there may not be. Maybe it was a typo and they accidentally used the plural form of shows when it should have been show. But, um, yeah, we got some, some pretty cool announcements as far as the scare zones go. Uh, first and foremost, we got Vikings Undead, which seems like it could be a pretty cool – Kind of, uh, I, I had a video out on all the announcements for the scare zones recently, and I said that it kind of gives me that that feel of maybe like the White Walkers in uh, Game of Thrones. Um, and, and if they have some type of like outdoor ship facade, I could see this looking amazing. Um, from there, we we go to Vanity Ball, which is on the streets of Hollywood at Universal Studios, which is a perfect fit. Hollywood in California is kind of known as the capital for plastic surgery. Yep. So the fact that our streets of Hollywood and, and uh, Universal have it, um, it's kind of cool as well. And, and I, I could see them pulling off something where, because they talk about uh, willing participants coming in and basically allowing these horrific living works of arts to be creative of them. Um, so I could see them potentially having like a street show, kind of like what they did last year with Chucky at our event. You know, Chucky had like a, a stage a stage event or a stage show, sorry. If I'm not mistaken, streets. too, they so also did that it. like at the top of every hour for Vamp 85, right? Because for the New Year thing. Yeah. Yeah. So Vamp 85 had like the drop of the ball and like basically they would break out into like this huge dance uh, on stage and then they would jump out into the crowd and basically start chasing you. So, yeah, they, they did that as well at the top of every hour. So I can see them doing something uh, stage show related with maybe somebody getting tortured and turned into a work of art on stage at this scare zone. Um, the next one is An Arcade. An Arcade um, seems pretty cool as well. It ties in really well with the 80s theme. In, in the 80s, arcades were a big thing. Um, and, and additionally, they're, they're talking about this gang of neon slashers that are looking to play a game that you won't want to lose and I, I can see this being kind of like um and, and i know this isn't a popular thing at, at in uh hollywood but uh like jabberwockies and um and uh, uh what's it called academy of villains they, they sometimes use like neon lighting around their bodies and then 
you know, turn it off and turn it on to create like a wave and things like that. Yeah. I could see these guys kind of being like a neon suit and the suit, the suit will be off and then they'll pop out from behind a corner, maybe wearing like all black. So you can't see them very well in the dark up till their neon lights come on. So they're almost like there and gone at the same time when the lights turn on and on. I could see that being kind of cool. That'd be some really good uh, uh, technology awesome. to actually bring to the event as well. You know what I mean? Like that's something new and you haven't seen. So if that that can work out, that can be a potential original mage that they can develop too. Yeah, eventually, right? And um, I, I could see that being from from my perspective. I'm, I'm going three nights this time around, so I'm definitely gonna spend one night at least um, just looking at the scare zones. So not really like going into the houses one of the nights. And I, I think if they do that in an arcade, this might be a scare zone where I kind of stick around to, <laughs> to catch some of the people getting like jump scared. Um, that's all of the original um, scare zones. Then we go into, we have two uh, intellectual property scare zones. And the first one I know that you love, uh, I'm a bit skeptic, but you know, you and another viewer of mine have been uh, very, very like, uh, supportive of this scare zone and this artist, which is Rob Zombie. He's bringing Hellbilly Deluxe, which is an album of his. his I don't first... know much of it. I, I... You want me to take, you want me to tell you a little bit about it? Yeah, go ahead. Tell me a little bit about it. Cause you're the one that really like put me onto it. I, I really just thought it was like a playoff words. So this is Rob Zombie's first uh, solo studio album, Hellbilly Deluxe, Hellbilly Deluxe. Um, and it's got a lot of iconic songs like uh, living dead girl, uh, Dracula, super beast, just to name a few. Um, those are like the mo most well-known songs for his thing. And uh, if you're not familiar with a lot of Rob Zombie's work, uh, he does a lot of horror-inspired uh, music. So Living Dead Girl is literally talking about, um, in a way, kind of like a Bride of Frankenstein, but about a girl who's obsessed with the dead. So um, that's pretty cool. Of course, you got Dracula, obviously, talking about Dracula. Um, but a lot of his a lot of his music is horror-based, uh, uh, inspired um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how they do this and what creatures they bring to life. If they're going to watch any music videos or stuff like that. I know too, if you ever see Rob Zombie in concert, I, I seen, I saw him on new year's last year and, um, he puts on a really good show. He dresses really like weird and stuff like that. And kind of like a, a demonic type. Uh, like look on him which looks really badass when he puts all the black lights and stuff on and so I'm curious to see if they're gonna inspire someone that looks like Rob Zombie and also uh, if they're gonna just uh, make original creatures based off the songs and stuff like that in the lyrics so I'm really excited to see this and I I'm assuming they're gonna play the entire album from start to finish uh, throughout the remainder of the night um, so I'm curious to see that as well uh, just the sights and sounds of this um, just sounds really cool and I, I really want to see uh, how they pull this off yeah, for sure. And uh, I'll definitely have some coverage on this for you. I'll send it your way, I promise. Definitely. But, um, yeah, this is one that, you know, uh, I have a personal gripe against the guy. And, Anthony, you know exactly why. Uh, he kind of messed up my my uh, favorite horror movie Yeah. Um, when he, he remade it. Um, but I understand that outside of that, he's done some great things. Um, I did watch House of a Thousand Corpses, um, and I and I loved it as well, which we'll get to that as well. Um, so I, I do agree that the guy has done some good things. I'm, I've never been like, um, a huge fan of his music, not because I don't like his music. It's just cause I never got into it. So I don't know his songs, but just going off of what you're telling me, all the songs are named after something that could be tor turned into like a horror monster. So, definitely. I mean, it makes sense. And in, in my video, I also said, it. I mean, his name is Rob Zombie. Yeah. Zombie is something that fits perfectly into Halloween Horror Nights. So even if they just made a scare zone that was called the Zombies of Rob Zombie, I'm pretty sure they could pull it off pretty well. It's Halloween Horror Nights at the end of the day. Universal Studio does a good, great job um, with all the properties that, that they're given. Um, they, they definitely go above and beyond to deliver each and every year. So um, I, I have my hesitations, but I'm going to hold my breath and, and give this one a shot. And then from that, we go to one that I'm actually really excited about. It, it's, it comes in the form of a movie that I thought was an extremely fun zombie movie. Maybe not the scariest. It has its definite scares. Um, and that is Zombieland. This, this uh, scare zone is called Zombieland Double Tap. Um, and, you know, it, it talks about the rules of survival and basically how we're going to be immersed into the United States of Zombieland. So um, I, I hope that they have uh, some lookalikes, like 
uh, Woody Harrelson lookalikes and Jesse Eisenberg looks lookalikes. That would be really cool. Um, Emma Stone and I forget the young the the younger one's Little name, Rock. but if they had some lookalikes in there, what's that? Little Rock. That was the what's her one. real name though? Uh, I forget, but I know that's her name in the movie. Gotcha. Okay. Um, because this movie was a real fun movie. I'm I'm a huge fan of Woody Harrelson and Jesse Eisenberg. So uh, if if they're able to get lookalikes, and Orlando does a really good job with the lookalikes. Last year in Stranger Things, the lookalikes were damn near on point. They actually look like the actual characters were working the actual house. So I, I think they could pull it off really well. And this, I, I could see it being a really fun scare zone to walk through. Um, I, I, I could see if they, and they're also getting um, some inspiration from the upcoming uh, sequel that's coming out of Zombieland as well. So we're going to see a little bit of the first Zombieland and the next Zombieland that's yet to be released. Which so I've, uh, it's going to be cool. It's going to be... I've already seen it. What's that? Oh, have you? I'm just going to leave it at that. Ooh. Oh, somebody has the inside scoops. So the I scoops. can't talk about it because I signed right. a disclosure form, but that's all I'll say is I've seen Zombieland too. Nice. Yeah. And uh, so basically that, that wraps up all, all of our scare zones in Orlando. Um, they came out in a whole package. So it, it, they weren't released one at a time like the houses were. Uh, we got them all at once. And I, I think it leaves for a pretty good selection of scare zones to walk through. Uh, you have everything from from zombies to, you know, maniacs in, in uh, neon suits to some plastic surgery and some Vikings. So not all of them tie into the 80s necessarily, uh, the whole theme of it, but they all seem pretty cool. And that leads us into the house announcements. The house announcements. So today, uh, as of this recording, we got a brand new announcement for HHN, uh, both Hollywood and Orlando. This is Orlando's last announcement to finalize their event and their slate. And uh, Hollywood still has one more left. But this announcement was House of a Thousand Corpses, uh, which will be returning for to Hollywood for its fourth year. Not in a row, but it's just fourth year. Uh, for the first year, it came in 2000 actually as an original maze. Rob Zombie liked it so much that he actually concepted it into a movie. Uh, 2010, it came back uh, based off Rob Zombie's movie, and then 2011, it made a return as a as a kind of um, by uh, popular demand. Um, and 2011 was actually the first year I ever went to Halloween Horror Nights, so I remember going through this maze vividly, um, and I had an amazing time going through it. Uh, the, it was spot on to the movie and stuff like that, and um, I'm excited to see what they do this time around. Uh, this time around, I know for sure out in Hollywood. They're not going to make it a 3D maze, so that's fun. Um, we're going to actually get to walk through this without glasses, so that's going to be really fun to do. Um, but if you guys know anything about this movie, it, it's a very mystical kind of horror movie where it takes you on this journey with these teenagers to uh, the Firefly house in search of uh, the famous Dr. Satan, who's... That's not Dr. Satan, but that's Satan, but, you know... Um, <laughs> It takes you on the famous journey to find Dr. Satan, and um, we see a lot of stuff break down. We find out a darker history of the Firefly family and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, if, if, if it's going to be anything like 2011, if they do the same design, I would not be disappointed one bit. Uh, just, you know, without 3D. I mean, which Murdy already confirmed, ours is not going to be 3D. This is actually going to be the first year it actually uh, appears in uh, HHN Orlando. So that's actually a brand new thing for you guys. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, have you seen the movie? And if so, what's some stuff that you want to actually see in this maze? Um, so, yeah, I've seen the movie. It's been some time since I've seen it again. But I, I do have fond memories of when I watched it, really enjoying, like, the horror aspect. It's a little bit more gore um, horror than your average horror. Um, I, I, I remember one scene specifically, and it was like the girl uh, of the group of like bad people. I forget her name, but she was scalping one of the teens. Yeah. Um, in a room, and that's something that I think would be really cool translated into into the house. Um, outside of that, I'm kind of just leaving it up in there. I gotta. I'm going now through through my whole routine of rewatching all the IPs so that I prepare myself for Halloween Horror Nights. Definitely. So this is one that I have to add on. Um, this once again, you know, I'm, I'm going to give it, give everything a shot at the end of the day. I think universal could do a great job with everything. Um, that sounds so freaking biased. I mean, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, at the same time, I'm kind of bummed that this was the last announcement um, and that, 
Rob Zombie is getting two pieces of Orlando this year. I mean, I would have been okay with one, uh, but who knows? I mean, at the end of the day, the, uh, I don't want to be one of those those people that's on social media basically bashing the event. Understand right. that I'm still going to the event. What? what go what, ahead, whisper what you. What? Why you gotta hate? I'm not hating. So I'm not one of those people online that's that's gonna be like hating necessarily and already discounting this. I am gonna give it a fair shot. It's just one of those things where, and, and you know what? Uh, uh, let's talk about something uh, additional. This year with leaked lineups and whatnot has to be the least surprising year because the leaked lineups were so spot on. So I really didn't get surprised by anything. It's funny that you bring that up because I actually released a leaked lineup video back in May of May 16th, 2019. Um, something that some, some fans sent me that I found on Reddit pages and stuff like that. Um, I released two and the second one was so damn near spot on. Like literally every maze that they announced was on that leaked lineup list. I think outside of one maybe, but um, yeah, this this league lineup was very spot on this year. Um, so I mean, I, every time a maze gets announced, I get a comment on that video like, "Fuck, dude, your yeah. your freaking video was right." And I was like, I just I was just passing on the news. I didn't leak this myself. I found it on Reddit's and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, the league lineup was so incredibly accurate this year that yeah, going into it. You knew what mazes were coming, you just didn't know in what order they were coming. So that's what kind of, yeah. that's what kind of, in a way, killed the surprise. But at the same time, it just kept you wanting more. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm a huge fan of the event, and I'm going regardless. My my, my uh, hype level for the event is always ten, um, even before an announcement comes out. But this year, maybe it's because I mean, like you 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 could understand from my perspective is I'm a little bit in the know. So I know things before they come out in some cases. So this year has to be like the the least surprising year. Although I think the the lineup is probably one of the most solid lineups I've ever seen. Definitely. But nothing caught me off guard because I'm a little bit in the know now with my YouTube YouTube channel and yeah. this podcast and knowing people like you and other YouTubers that are also in the know and like, you know, give me insights on what's coming. Um, it's really hard to surprise me this year, and I'm hoping that's not a consistent thing going yeah. forward. I, I hope they're able to surprise me going forward. But definitely, this year for sure kind of like left me like, oh man, damn, nothing really surprised me. Definitely, definitely. So if I were you, I mean, since you said that you're kind of like a little bummed out that Rob Zombie is getting to with House of Thousand Corpses, I'd go in with low expectations, and hopefully, when you walk out, it changes your whole view of it. Same thing with the scare zone. Going with low expectations, being that you don't know the guy too well uh, from his music or anything. Um, just going with low expectations, and then hopefully it just blows you away. I mean, outside the music, I would look at it from a scary point of view. Like, wow, this actually makeup looks good and scary. Um, you know, the spot onto the movie or whatever. I mean, that's how I look at most of the things. But um, what is your final verdict uh, so far for your entire event? I mean, it looks like it's a good stacked lineup this year. Yeah, we got a good stack lineup. Um, this year, there was there was two things that kind of like, you know, I wasn't calling for, and they came to the event, I, but I already knew they were kind of coming. Um, you know, the, this is part of it, the Rob Zombie properties, but like you said, I'm going to give it, I'm going to go in with low expectations, but with with an open mind, and I think it is going to probably surprise me. I'm probably just, I'm probably just a, a, a sour, I'm grumpy cat right now, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm grumpy cat just because I didn't get it my way, but I'm, I'm sure it's going to be fine. Another another house that I wasn't really like calling for was the Us House, and you and I had a conversation about this as well. And I also know that the Us House wasn't what originally was slated for that location. It was the last minute, and that is reflected also. If people don't believe that that's true, uh, pay attention. Every single IP house for Orlando had a, a, uh, a custom video for the release except for Us. Us was a last minute addition. I don't know how that came to be fru to fruition, but there was something else that was slated for that for that slot, and us got it last minute. So um, I don't know how well that's gonna come off because I know when that happened before, um, they had uh, what was it? It was the Scream House, and then there was contractual issues, and it ended up turning to uh, what's the what's that one movie? Um, 
The one movie where they one day of the year you could kill everybody. The Purge. Yeah, The Purge. There we go. Sorry. It ended up turning into The Purge, and a lot of people actually caught on to little hints inside of the house that it looked like the Scream house. So, I mean, at the end of the day, that house ended up being pretty cool regardless. So, I mean, my, my overall uh, uh, assessment of the event is it seems pretty damn solid. I, I've i come to, to really want to see the Ghostbusters house, um, the puppeteering, because there's going to be a lot of that. Stranger Things was great last year, in my opinion. So I, I'm really looking forward to walking through that house. Even though it wasn't my number one house, it, it was it was damn near uh, top five for sure. Definitely. Um, and then one house that I'm really looking forward to when it comes to intellectual properties is the, the Classic Monsters. That's a house that you guys got last year, and I was extremely jealous just because Classic Monsters are, you know, for lack of a better word, classic, right? They're, they're amazing. Um, but then when it comes to the IPs, we got some really cool IPs that are coming down too. So the, the one that I'm really looking forward to from our IPs is, is, um, the, the, uh, the Yeti, uh, the terror of the Yukon that, that right there, I think it's going to be dope. I mean, uh, the, the event looks amazing and the scare zones for the most part are all scare zones that I think are going to be pretty impressive. I'm wondering, one thing that I'm wondering is who's going to be the scare zone that, or which is going to be the scare zone that everybody gravitates towards. And I mean, Rob I'm Zombie. Say, I'm going to say Rob Zombie or Zombieland because those are two very popular, popular yeah. things. Yeah. So I, that's what I'm guessing too. It's going to be one of those two. And mostly if Rob Zombie's uh, scare zone is, is playing a lot of music. Um, but, you know, it, he's already got a house this year. So I, I want to see if, if one of the scare zones outside of that one maybe Zombieland uh, gets as popular and goes down the same route as Trick or Treat and Killer Clowns from Outer Space, you know, going from a scare zone success yeah. to a house the next year. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, that is going to do it and wrap up for this week of East versus West. Uh, be sure to tune in the next episode because the next episode we're going to compare and contrast our our lineups uh, that are officially slated for this year, scare zones and stuff like that, and we're going to get in the true form of East versus West, the only show where you can get the dose of both coasts. I'm going to get those shirts made for us, Eddie. That's definitely something, oh, we, can yeah. it's def like definitely it. something we can wear at the events. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Definitely. So thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of East versus West, and we hope to uh, hopefully get your – uh, viewership back for the next episode where we like i said are going to break down both of our events after uh, everything is announced over here in hollywood so we will see you guys in the next one and bye